the most vital element, what could it be? Hmm. Maybe you just thought of oxygen, and if you did, you are correct. Hi friends, it's Lauren. Several years ago, I found an air inventory test from a book called Health Power, and so today I'd like to give you the, the test. Yes or no, do you keep your shoulders back and your spine straight most of the time? Do you shallow breathe, meaning through your chest and neck muscles? Is your clothing feeling pretty tight, such that it might restrict you from breathing from your diaphragm? Yes or no, for most of the day, is your environment well ventilated with some fresh air coming in? Yes or no, have you exercised today? Yes or no, do you make it a habit to get up and move around after being sedentary for a period of time? Yes or no, is your home free of mold? It can lurk behind walls and in closets. Yes or no, when you wake up in the morning, do you make your bed right away? And finally, yes or no, is your home environment polluted with carbon monoxide, harsh cleansers, or other chemicals? The truth is, slouching, shallow breathing, tight clothing, rooms without ventilation, not exercising, a moldy home, a home with chemical fumes and or carbon monoxide fumes, and a habit of making your bed first thing in the morning can contribute to you being robbed of good oxygen. And oxygen is the elixir of life. When we breathe in correctly, we are being robbed of life. Breathing using the diaphragm is the best way to breathe. Breathing from the diaphragm means that we are, we are getting an adequate supply of the oxygen that we need. Breathe in through your nostrils and out through your nostrils. Make sure your belly is moving. It should puff out as you take the breath in and reduce after you exhale. Check to see if you're breathing using your diaphragm. It can really change the quality of your life. And sometimes our clothing can restrict the movement of our belly so that it's harder to breathe. So make sure your clothing isn't restricting the movement in the midsection. Sometimes we suck in our stomach out of habit and we don't realize. You see, pure air, if inhaled regularly and correctly, purifies our blood. That's from the Natural Remedies Encyclopedia. And good blood equals good health. The Bible says in Leviticus 17, 11, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Our lungs, stomach, liver, and brain are all affected by the air we breathe. Poisonous waste matter is expelled from our lungs. This is how the blood gets purified. Now on the flip side, if, you're, if you receive an inadequate supply of oxygen, the waste matter stays in the body, causing the blood to move sluggishly. That's also from the Natural Remedies Encyclopedia. In a book called New Start, it lists diseases from lack of oxygen. And some of these include chronic fatigue syndrome, anemia, depression, exhaustion, fatigue, and emotional disorders, page 144. It quotes, increased oxygen intake helps our memory, our mental agility, and our ability to work more productively. Page 140 says, lack of oxygen first affects judgment reason and willpower, all of which are the higher centers of our brain. It's so important to exercise regularly because the most effective way to increase oxygen uptake is to exercise. Each cell in your body is saturated with oxygen right after exercising. You will have more energy. A lady I know says she is amazed at how her body becomes so awake and energized right after doing her morning HIIT workout in the morning, high intensity interval training. Now, as far as a moldy house, mold gives off a toxic waste, which robs the air of good quality oxygen. Check your home and your kitchen regularly for evidences of mold. And maybe you thought I forgot about the one on making your bed first thing in the morning, right? Friends, don't make your bed first thing in the morning. Research shows that you want to air out the sheets before making it. This ensures that the moisture that's thrown off from your body during the night evaporates and doesn't just stay trapped in your bedding in that dark environment. That's just inviting mold and or dust mites. Now dust mites feed on our dead skin cells that fall off onto our bedding and they thrive also on the moisture in our bedding. So don't give them a chance of survival. Let the sun shine inside your bedroom. Fold down your bedding so that it can be properly ventilated. 
for about two hours after you get out of bed. You can then make your bed when it's all aired out. Our houses need some daily fresh air, just like our bodies. Being outdoors, especially around water, gives us opportunity to breathe in negative ions, which are electrically charged oxygen molecules. And if you're not around a body of water, it's okay, because after it rains, that's when those negative ions are abundant. So take some nice deep breaths outside right after a rainstorm. When God created Adam in Genesis chapter two, Adam was lifeless until God breathed into him the breath of life. This breath vitalized Adam and he became a living being. Shouldn't we take our inhale through our nostrils to receive of the breath that God gives us? God supplies us with a vital element of oxygen. Job says in chapter 27, three, all the while my breath is in me and the breath which God gave is in my nostrils. God blesses us moment by moment with all these precious gifts. He's such an amazing God. Friends, be patient with yourselves in forming these good habits to get more oxygen. It's the little things that add up that make a big difference. Keep persevering and you'll see a positive difference in your life. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye.